Recently, one of our viewers asked a really interesting question. They observed that there was a similarity between movements in Rolling Ying's Shaolin and Guangxing Tai Chi form. They wanted to know what the relationship was. So that's something that we're going to investigate today. Master Guoling Ying studied with Li Lin when he was five years old and didn't study Guangxing Tai Chi with Wang Jiari to 23. So we know that there was like about a 20 year difference between Sifu's uh, doing the Shaolin and uh, his Tai Chi. Uh, most of the masters actually did study some sort of Shaolin or Long Fist uh, before they did the Tai Chi. And of course, uh, the Sifu always emphasized that if you were young enough, you could study the Shaolin first because it gave the greatest amount of foundation to your work. So the foundation in the Northern Shaolin that Sifu teaches and his Guangxing Tai Chi are related definitely through Sifu. But let's take a look at the, the similarities. What I'm going to do first is I'm going to show you some still photos of uh, some of the stances and, um, and movements. And then see if you can kind of just looking at the still photos, identify if it comes out of the Tai Chi or the, or the Northern Shaolin. Of course, if you know the hand positions, you might be able to tell the difference just from looking at that. But try to ignore that and just kind of generally be open and kind of look at the stance work to see. And then what I'll do is I'll cut to uh, actually the videos of where those stills came from so you can kind of see the in and out of the movement. And then you can kind of then, you know, know whether it's the Shaolin or the Tai Chi. So how did you do on that? Were you able to guess? Um, before we get into like uh, some of the other details, you have to realize that uh, Sifu really loved the Shaolin. I mean, you, know, you can see from the uh, old uh, photographs, uh, the videos of uh, Sifu kind of commanding the group set of uh, Tachuan, that uh, that was one of his favorite things to do. He didn't, it was very rare that he would have a Tai Chi group set. But whenever it came to any kind of occasion where he wanted to show off his Kung Fu, he'd always get the Cha Tuan students together and then they have to do the demonstration. And so we know that uh, he had a particular fondness for the Shaolin. Whether or not that comes through his uh, training and influence, the straight leg kicks and the falling stance into the Tai Chi, I guess we really never totally know because unless we found somebody else that studied with Wang Jiaoyu, his uh, Tai Chi teacher, uh, we wouldn't know whether that influence of those uh, of the Shaolin affected his Tai Chi. But uh, one thing we do know is that Sifu made a promise, a vow, to teach the Tai Chi exactly as he learned it. And we know that 
from both Sifu saying that in his interviews and uh, from uh, Simu, his wife, saying that Sifu made Simu promise that uh, she carried on the tradition that she would not change any of the Tai Chi from what he had learned from Wang, Zhang, Wang Zhao Yu. So I'm going to show you a couple more um, movements between Shaolin and the Guanping Tai Chi that are somewhat similar. Um, in uh, Guanping Tai Chi, we look at our fair lady, lady works at shuttles. And it comes, looks like this. So in this movement, we have the hand position here, and then we have this elbow sweep, then the block and the punch, right? So it looks like this. Here, elbow sweep, and then block and punch. Also, uh, it can be interpreted as basically block this way, block this way, and into the punch. But again, in the original Tai Chi form, they emphasize this sweep here, this position, and then as you step out, the block, and then the punch. In the fourth road of the Kantwei, there's a similar, very similar movement where you come out with a knife hand and you step behind and you do this movement here, and then the finish. So this is sweeping, to grab off the elbow, and then grabbing the shoulder, arm, and then sweeping for the sw foot sweep this way for the final sweep. So you can see this movement here, and this movement here are fairly similar. Also, in Cha Tuan, taking the fourth road movement, which goes here, here, in uh, the Cha Tuan, there's a movement that goes like this. So this is the fourth road, ninth hand, and then in the cha tuan, it sweeps like this, and then it goes to like this. So again, from here, like that. You have to remember that in the Tai Chi, even though the movements are kind of like structured one after another, we need to kind of look at the movements individually for their function and we have to remember that in actual function or application the next move that's in the form isn't necessarily the next move or the, the way that the move has to work so if we take each move individually like in fairly they worked it the arm sweep here linking that uh comparing that to that uh cha chuan move that i showed you if you're in this application here and you're doing the sweep off, grabbing the arm, and then the punching, you could actually step into wind blowing lotus leaf for the similar sweep. So if you took the cha chuan move and you actually applied that similarly to the Guanping Tai Chi, it would look basically look like this. And again, in the Cha Tuan, it looks like that. So there are similarities between both the function and the way the movements uh, are uh, expressed. Um, let's take a look at one more movement that I want to show you that's pretty similar. If you're not familiar with the actual movement in the Cha Tuan, you may not be able to experience that same uh, similarity that I can experience uh, performing it, but to me they're very uh, related. So it comes out of the when you come from the single whip and you go down 
into the punch. Step back, ride the horse, and turn, and then like that. So let's look at that one move from the single whip coming down. Okay, from here, this move right here, from here, turning back. This looks like a bow and arrow stance, like in the Shaolin. This looks like a cat stance. And then stepping out into the ma, the horse. In the Cha Chuan, I'll take it uh, from where it is and then show you in the same relationship. There is a move that comes from here after the, and then it moves back, and it goes like this. So again, from uh, the knife edge strike, turn back like that. Here, to me, those are very similar moves. Sometimes the similarities between two moves and the one in Shaolin and the one in the one in Tai Chi are related, but not quite as obvious because the movement might be uh, fairly different to the kind of the casual observer, but knowledge of the function might show that they're very similar in nature. So I'm going to show you two moves, one from Shaolin and one from uh, Guanxing Tai Chi, and then I'm going to kind of let you kind of think about the, which, how they're related. You'll see. So in the uh, uh, here, I'll do it one more time slow. The pound down, this out, trap. So taking that move. So in the Guanping, it's going to come from wind blowing lotus leaf, block. Punch down, turn, and the double jump kick. Again, I do it slow from wind blowing lotus leaf, punch down. I'll give you a clue. <laughs> so, those don't look anything like each other at all. So, again, it's not just the obvious that's the correlation, but it could be the function. In and out of the um, Northern Shaolin, Wuling Ying's Northern Shaolin, and uh, the Tai Chi is hidden China. China being arm locks, arm bars, uh, joint locks, that kind of thing. And a lot of times it's not so obvious within somebody performing the form, uh, especially if you're not conscious of the actual function or application, uh, that these things actually even exist in the form. So how are these two obviously different looking moves similar in function? So in the uh, Chachuan, because here, this is a, somebody's grabbing you with their right arm in this case, and again, China always goes against the direction of the joint. So in this case, the opponent is grabbing me with the right arm here. As I'm trapping his wrists on top of his hand grab, on top of my shoulder, I'm coming over the elbow and smashing it down so that the joint is coming here and then he's having the Getting smashed down on this. So again, it goes like this. And then there's a punch afterwards after you smash his arm down and punch. So we understand that as a movement of china and a elbow, a shoulder grab, elbow break. So how does Wind blowing lotus leaf, which is a sweep, block and punch, and a turn with a fist, which most people interpret as just a 
on guard position end up being similar to that move. Uh, so one day I'm doing this move and Sifu shows me the application which is basically like China. So from here he had me uh, grab with my arm and this is to be grabbing with the right arm because you're coming around here. So he had me grab his shoulder with the right arm and as he was in this he had me grab with right arm here and as he came around trapped my hand wrist over his shoulder and came over my elbow down like that so again from this position oh. but of course we know that in the Guanping form is taught as this and this you have to remember that in within the form is just the basic structure of the whole universe of knowledge. Um, it's not ex every movement within the Guanping doesn't have to be performed exactly the way it was taught in the form because the form is only so limited in terms of being able to teach. You can have like only 64 specific applications. I mean, in each each movement is basically a universe of understanding. So again, I want you to kind of become aware of the difference what Sifu showed me as the actual application and what is shown in the form. Um, I think that's going to kind of entice you to kind of look at your form differently and try to understand, um, kind of be more open to what the movements are. So uh, that's the correlation between the two of those movements that are not obvious in the performance is that they're both china and they're both trapping uh, shoulder grab and coming over the elbow joint so so what do you think i like to hear your comments about what you uh, think on the subject for myself i do think that there's a definite correlation between uh sifu's northern shaolin and his guanping tai chi if nothing else just because it can come through the same person's practitioner's uh, understanding. And once you gain understanding in one discipline, it's easy to carry over that understanding into another discipline. And um, for myself, I don't make any separation between my Shaolin and the uh, Guanping Tai Chi. The people tend to think of it as one is internal and one is external. I think that people kind of that specialize in Guanping Tai Chi um, aren't even looking at my Shaolin videos. I kind of find that interesting. Mm, perhaps it's because uh, it only came to the Portsmouth Square and YC Zhang lineage. But um, for me, there's no distinction between whether I'm doing, you know, my Guanping or Shaolin or any of my other practices for that matter. For me, practice is practice. So thank you very much.